Claudette Colvin was 15 years old when she was arrested for refusing to give her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus to a white passenger on March 2, 1955, nine months before Rosa Parks would be charged with the same crime in the same city. In fact, it was Claudette's court case, Browder v. Gale, that ultimately outlawed segregation on public transportation in Alabama and ended the 13-month-long Montgomery bus boycott that started after Rosa Parks was arrested. Beyond her own experiences as a young black woman in the Jim Crow South, Colvin was politicized several years earlier by the arrest of her schoolmate, Jeremiah Reeves, a black 16-year-old who ultimately was sentenced to death after a white girl accused him of rape, though all evidence pointed to a consensual relationship between the two teenagers. Claudette later described spending all of February 1955 learning about influential black historical figures at school during Black History Month only to find herself being told to move to the back of a bus on which she had paid the full fare. Of that moment, she said, it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing me down and Harriet Tubman was on the other side of me pushing me down. I couldn't get up. Why isn't Claudette Colvin's name as well known as Truth's or Tubman's or Park's? Civil rights organizations at the time were looking for ways to bring attention to legal discrimination and segregation and were initially interested in Colvin's case. They ultimately threw their weight behind Rosa Parks deciding that she was a better representative for such an important cause. Parks was a woman in her 40s and a committed civil rights activist who was well aware of the responsibility she was accepting as the face of the Montgomery bus boycott, which lasted over a year and pressured city buses to integrate. Parks was also a middle-class married woman with light skin. Colvin, on the other hand, was from a working class family, had darker skin, and by the time of her trial was pregnant and unmarried. Several people, including Colvin and Parks themselves, have speculated that Parks was chosen as the representative of the movement because she was considered more respectable than Colvin and potentially more appealing to a white audience. Parks would remain the public leader of the fight against segregation on buses, while Colvin joined three other women as plaintiffs on the court case that would ultimately outlaw segregation on public transportation in Alabama. Though Colvin's court case changed history, Colvin struggled after it ended. It was extremely difficult to find work in the city where she had been arrested and fought back, and she lost several jobs after her white employers realized who she was. She earned a scholarship to the historically black university, Alabama State, but even there she was labeled a troublemaker. She dropped out and moved to New York City, where she had difficulty supporting her two children. She worked as a maid for many years before becoming a, nurse, a nurse's aide, a career from which she has retired. Colvin is now 81 years old and lives in the Bronx. In the year 2000, a Rosa Parks Museum opened in Montgomery, and Claudette Colvin was asked to share her story in a video that would play in the museum. She declined. There is no closure, she said. This does not belong in a museum because this struggle is not over. We still don't have all that we should have. And personally, there can be no closure. They took away my life. If they want closure, they should give it to my grandchildren.